Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the astrological aspects in the charts of Marjorie Taylor Greene and Ted Cruz. And as we all know, these are two people that are in the Republican Party and are in the news quite a bit. So the first chart I will be talking about will be Marjorie Taylor Greene. So Marjorie Taylor Greene has her sun sign in Gemini. Gemini represents communications. It's ruled by the planet Mercury and it has a very dual and airy nature. So as we remember, we remember from one of my past videos where I talked about Donald Trump, he is also a Gemini. So Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene, they have that sun sign Gemini in common. And Gemini, really, you know, it's all about communications. It's all about speaking. So these people, you know, they really can make great public speakers. However, a lot of the times, um, the dual nature of Gemini, it, it tends to make them contradictory. So they perhaps keep contradicting themselves and perhaps sometimes get themselves in trouble. It's really important for those people with Gemini to stay grounded and there are many other aspects in Marjorie Taylor Greene's astrological chart which would indicate a lack of balance and a lack of ungroundedness, sort of causing that Gemini energy to really go off on tangents. So a lot of the times she ends up kind of putting her foot in her own mouth. Her moon sign is in Leo and Leo really has a need the need as represented by the moon sign to be in the limelight. Leo is really all about the social sphere and the social conditioning of, of an individual. So that being said, Leo rules the lion. So she is all about wanting to be the center of attention, wanting to be in the limelight. And the moon represents that needs and those emotional needs. So that Leo moon, you know, she really craves the attention, even if it's negative attention, you know, on an unconscious level with the Leo moon, attention is attention, you know. So she has Mercury in retrograde in the 11th house. So what does this mean? So Mercury stands for communications. And whenever someone manifests a retrograde planet in their astrology chart, the energy gets turned inward. And it's more about the concept of revising, redoing, restructuring, reorganization. So those with a Mercury in retrograde, a lot of times they feel like they're not fully being heard. So the Gemini sun really, you know, it, it really wants to be heard through its communications. The Leo moon wants to be in the limelight regardless. And her having this Mercury in retrograde, it causes a lot of frustration for her because she really feels like she's not fully being heard with this Mercury in retrograde. It also falls in her 11th house and the 11th house is associated with the astrological sign Aquarius which is really all about groups and friends and community. And it's the astrological house that is most associated with the political sphere. So that being said, there is a lot of frustration going on with her in relation to how she's coming across and her feeling like she's not fully being heard. So she has uh, some challenging aspects in her chart. She has a lot of squares and squares represent crisis and tension and breakthroughs. She has some trines and trines indicate the ability for a fluid exchange of movement and the ability to be able to um, just be a presence that is able to sort of get on center stage in the first place. Um, a lot of times trine energies are backed up by someone's beliefs, by someone's hard work and someone's effort and by good deeds. She also has, has a lot of oppositional aspects, which can make a contradictory nature. So the first aspect I'm going to talk about would be the planet Pluto, which represents power. It's in square aspect and a square is a tense aspect to the planet Saturn, which is all about um, the structure and the foundation and limitations. So a Pluto squared Saturn manifests as 
her feeling restrained about her role in society and her really needing to be accountable for her actions because Saturn represents the Lord of Karma. So someone with a Pluto squared Saturn, they have to face many challenges and become really aware of their unconscious dynamics relating to power. So as part of claiming their greater personal authority and inner security for oneself, they really need to be accountable. So as we see, she, you know, she really creates a lot of havoc and a lot of mess. If her soul is not taking accountability for the chaos she's creating, she is going to keep up creating a mess and you know she, and 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 ultimately, you know, if she's not in integrity, she's really, you know, just going to be creating more intense karma for herself. So this aspect, this Pluto square aspect, it really indicates that at least one parent expected her to conform to their expectations of success. So this indicates a very possibility, a very strong possibility of a childhood that that probably had some hard edges around it. And I'm guessing unless she is, you know, extremely introspective and really wants to do a lot of emotional and spiritual healing, then a lot of these components that that um you know that she she grew up with you know a lot of these challenging psychological components she has not smoothed out so she's acting out of this unconscious need to prove herself um for you know that that harsh childhood you know where where she may have wanted to be in the limelight may have wanted to prove herself but she kept getting sort of whips and chains you know, as represented by that harsh Saturn aspect in relation to Pluto. So she has her Pluto in retrograde. So those who manifest a Pluto in retrograde in their astrology chart, you know, Pluto represents power. And that indicates a spilling over of power struggles from a past life. Those individuals with Pluto in retrograde, if they are on a higher path of healing, they become extremely psychological and they don't want have to have anything to do with the dynamics and power struggles because they've been there, they've done that, they've been in the position of power and they have abused it. So we see her kind of abusing her power here, you know, so that is also to her detriment. Her next aspect, she has Mars, which is about your energy and the astrological sign of cancer. Cancer rules the home and family environment where the first emotional patterns were laid down. Those having the astrological sign of Mars in cancer, they tend to internalize conflict. And that also is a representation of an unhappy childhood where there could have been a lot of battle and a lot of conflict in the early childhood home and family environment. This also relates to that last aspect that I was talking about, the Pluto squared Saturn, where again, there was expectations on her to perform in, in almost an unrealistic way and pressures um, you know, for her to perform in almost an unrealistic way. The next aspect she has is the planet Jupiter, which is all about expansion and optimism. It's in dynamic or tense aspect, also known as a square aspect, to the planet Saturn, which is again that lord of karma and it's all about heaviness and responsibility. So this manifests in many ways. Her sense of heaviness and responsibility may limit her ability to express her creative talents. So, for example, her growing up, you know, someone with a Leo moon is so creative. You know what I mean? She she may have been asked to put on, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, maybe, um, you know, extra responsibility, extra duties where she couldn't fully express her creativity. So in this aspect, the planet Jupiter as represented by optimism and the planet Saturn as represented by pessimism and your personal karma they're sort of fighting it out so she will go through tests of egotism poor self-esteem extravagance strict discipline hope and pessimism kind of all in one day so you know this is this is someone who is definitely a a, a fighter 
she has pretty intense karma as represented by those squares and unfortunately she's kind of fighting on the wrong team so uh, her last aspect i'm going to talk about would be the planet venus which rules relationships it's sitting opposed uranus so we have venus opposed which is uranus uranus is all about rebellion so this is someone who is a thrill seeker someone who's rebellious someone who wants to shake and break the status quo and create earthquakes and tidal waves just really just for the hell of it just to be seen just to be heard just to be kind of annoying so this is someone who is always feeling the need to defend their their originality and independence against circumstances and people who would dare to check it so we're constantly seeing that with Marjorie Taylor Greene. This is one of the hallmark aspects, you know. We almost see her, you know, sort of lashing out and then unconsciously, you know, she's this still kind of this little girl who's getting in trouble by the authority figures for acting out bad behavior. All right, everyone. So now I'm going to be talking about the astrological chart of Ted Cruz. So Ted Cruz has his sun sign in Capricorn and Capricorn rules the planet Saturn and Saturn is all about upholding those traditional structures and those traditional hierarchies, corporate movements, um, corporations can be represented by the planet Capricorn as ruled by Saturn because again it's all about top down. Uh, if you think of, you know, like trickle economics, you know, that's sort of a lot to do with that Capricorn energy in relation to those hierarchical structures. Now, he was born at zero degrees Capricorn and zero degrees is the purest energy of something. And it's like the introduction into what that astrological sign means. So Ted Cruz is is really all about upholding those traditional structures that really need to break down for Pluto and Aquarius, which is coming in 2024. So his moon sign is in Libra. And we know Ted Cruz likes to think of himself as this very independent person. However, a moon sign in Libra is extremely dependent upon other people to make decisions. Libra is, you know, really all about social justice. It's about harmony. It's about diplomacy. Those having a moon sign in Libra may also be really into the arts. However, when it comes to making independent action, Libra, that's really not Libra's strong point. So his moon sign is conjunct or it's sitting right next to the planet Uranus, which is all about volatility and all about change. Those having a moon conjunct Uranus can have volatile emotions and emotional outbursts that really come out of nowhere. So this guy, you know, having this, this moon Uranus conjunction is, you know, very emotionally volatile and really kind of emotionally unstable. I would be kind of scared to be scared to be around this person after a certain amount of time, you, you may see these emotional outbursts. So he has his Mercury, which is the planet of communication. It's intense aspect or square aspect to the planet Uranus. And again, Uranus is all about shaking things up. It's that lightning bolt. It's that earthquake. It's that instability. So this is someone who oscillates between a relatively quiet to almost manic levels of mental activity. So again, you know, with this aspect in that moon conjunct Uranus aspect, he is unstable, he's volatile, and he makes probably like decisions out of his volatile emotions, which is kind of scary. You know, if you want someone in charge, you want someone to be grounded and stable. So his north node is an Aquarius. And it's interesting because Putin also has a North Node in Aquarius. So what we're seeing here with the North Node in Aquarius is their their behavior, their evolutionary their evolutionary path is to bring people together as represented by that North Node in Aquarius. It might not always people might not always come together for the good of humanity. They may come together out of something like a protest. However, it is bringing people together. So his north node is in the fifth house. 
the fifth house in the astrological chart is all about play. It's all about romance. It's all about fun. You think of things like gambling, gambling and speculation. So with this aspect, Ted Cruz may love to turn Texas into perhaps one big um, casino. You know, this is someone who perhaps wants to turn their state into one big Las Vegas, which is really not what humanity needs now. You know, there's a time and a place for that fifth house energy of gambling and speculation. However, you know, for a, a state to run well, it shouldn't be run by, you know, by casinos. So his north node, again, in Aquarius, which is evolu evolutionary direction, it's in square aspect or tense aspect to the planet Jupiter, which is about expansion. This creates someone who can be very quarrelsome, someone who is a real strong individualist, and someone who is really unafraid of going against the grain. This is kind of a scary aspect because this really is someone who is a total and complete nonconformist. Um, you know, so it's really interesting. We have this, his sun sign in Capricorn, which is really all about conforming to these structures, right? And these hierarchies. But then he has all these aspects of the rebel. So his ego structure, right, as represented to that sun sign, really wants to uphold those traditional Republican st structures. But other aspects indicate that he is, you know, an extreme rebel in, in, in a lot of cases and will really go against the grain, um, you know, to be able to try to get his point across and do what he wants. So he has really, really strong second house aspects. So the second house in the astrological chart stands for the material foundations. The second house stands for finances. Those who have a lot of planets in their second house, they really want to feel materially secure. So his planets fall in the astrological sign of Scorpio. And Scorpio is all about accepting loss. So what does this mean and how does this manifest for Ted Cruz? He is terrified of losing his position of power because he is sitting on a lot of money and he is someone who really is all about his stuff. He's all about his, you know, his ego is really tied to his material stuff and his material finances. However, lurking around the bend is that Scorpio energy, which whispers in your ear, you know, this is not going to last forever. You are going to have to eventually give this up and you are going to have to eventually lose this. So because Scorpio is a fixed sign and it, and the the vibration and energies of Scorpio, the psychology of Scorpio understands that nothing in this, this material world can really be held on to. He's trying to hold on to it tight like a hoarder um, because he's so scared he's going to lose it and that it's, it's coming sometime down the road. So let's see here. He has his Chiron, which is all about his wounds, in the astrological sign of Aries, which is the first sign. It's all about, it's the sign of the self, the sign that rules the physical appearance and the vitality and the ability to be able to take independent action. So a, a Chiron in Aries, their core wound and their core pain really comes from a feeling of, of worthlessness. And really, it's about taking responsibility for your independent action, taking about responsibility for your existence. And it really shows with this aspect that that on a lot of levels, he's actually not really a natural leader and that he really relies upon others to make his decisions as represented by that strong first house. And Libra, and again, the first house is really the house of independent action. So what he's doing here is he's really, he's really reliant upon others to make decisions, and then he ends up really taking the credit for this. You know, so this is a real lack of character we're seeing with some of these aspects. So he has a Cancer Midheaven, and the Midheaven is the highest point in the astrological chart. It's the chart of the 
um, you know, it's the it's the point of the the public image and the public persona. So what we're seeing with this Cancer Midheaven is that good old boy nature. You know, um, in the United States chart, the sun sign is in Cancer. And this is all about having family values. So he comes across and he speaks about having these family values, you know. Um, and he likes to have the this public image of, of being this real family guy. However... His actions um, would indicate otherwise. So he has the planet Saturn, which is all about your limitations and restrictions in the 8th house. So he may find it tough to really accept changes in his life. So if this man ends up losing again, or excuse me, if he ends up losing, you know, in the next election or, or the election after that, he's probably going to have a really tough time. Um, we may see him go off the deep end with certain behaviors, you know. Um, so the eighth house, it's ruled by Scorpio. And a theme of the Scorpio is, um, you know, fears and unconscious fears. He could be um, on some one level really unaware of his fears and his blockages and on another level you know let those fears sort of overtake him so what we're seeing right now because he is in the position of power and authority and control he probably has a reign on those fears but if he ends up losing you know he could become ultra paranoid about a variety of things and almost like a split personality almost like a schizophrenic type you know in relation to this saturn in the eighth house so this aspect is also really tense on relationships and intimacy um, as Saturn blocks um, intimacy and eighth house, you know, in Scorpio, you know, there's a big component of intimacy with that astrological aspect. Okay, so that was my uh, brief analysis on Ted Cruz. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And it, as always, it's great to give out information and stay tuned for the next video. All right, hope everyone has a lovely day.